as a sociologist, no? as a graduate of behavioral sciences, one of the social problems that we have is fatherlessness. Fatherlessness is not the official term of a social problem, but really it is. And so when nobody wanted to address this glaring issue that we have in our nation, and even among Filipino-Chinese families, you know, we have so many stories of fathers who might be providers financially, but not emotionally, physically, spiritually. We felt like it was time for us to introduce a different kind of fathering, a different kind of uh, manhood. Hi, I'm Dennis C. I'm a pastor, I'm a father, I'm a digital content creator, and I am a homeschooling dad. Growing up, uh, one of the things that were instilled to us early on was the Chinese culture. We grew up in a family that would always say, you're Chinese. You're, it's very important that you know your history and your culture. Our parents are very, very strict, yet at the same time, they were very empowering they would expose us to the family business. I remember growing up, not being able to go to a lot of places because every summer, we were required to be in Divisoria. Kami po magbabantay ng tindahan. My dad rarely cries, but there was one time he was teary-eyed when he was talking to all of us, six siblings, and he told us, this is my dream for you guys, that you guys will be successful. Yung dream ko when I was in high school was I wanted to be uh, I wanted to work with the students. I was doing some leadership trainings and some Bible studies in different high schools. When I went to La Salle, so I was asking, what's, what's a good course? You know, and behavioral sciences was one of them. So I took that up because I knew I had a path to take. Number one, if I graduate, bagsa ko sa divisoria. Magbabantay din ako ng tindahan at mamanahin ko yung negosyo. Secondly was, I really wanted to be a pastor. I wanted to help, I wanted to minister, I wanted to go and share the love of Jesus to the world. And so I've got two paths, family business or maybe ministry. Right? So I took the easiest course, not knowing actually that this course is going to help me now that I'm pastoring. Act Like a Man Naman was uh, birthed out of a burden that when I started pastoring, it was 2007, I was 27 years old, and there was this hundreds of men and women, mostly singles, from 18 to 25 years old, that was going to our church. We started out with around 250 people, but in less than a year, it grew to a thousand people with a lot of single people. And I realized a lot of them were clueless about how to live their life, how to earn money. You know, yung holistic ba na perspective about life and not just faith, not just Jesus, but how the Bible can apply in every area of their life. Blog palang noon, walang YouTube, walang ano, nothing. You know, it was just, I think, the start of YouTube at the time. So we started blogging, we started training men, equipping men on how to become better men, how to become better fathers, providers, and leaders in their household and in society. Not knowing that this was gonna blow up really big and we would have a million readers annually. Dito sa Act Like a Man. That's now a movement. We've got books, we've got podcasts, we've got a YouTube channel where you can go and get your manhood resources. So that was my journey. And uh, at the end naman, my parents are really happy that I became a pastor. And we realized it wasn't really about the wealth. I know for many of us Chinese, that has been a major value that we have, no financial security. And I think as a family, we've realized, though most of my siblings are in business, we've realized that money is not the main thing. Even with the challenges that I faced, especially the pressures as a Filipino Chinese, most of my classmates are now multimillionaires. And then here I am working in the church, knowing that I won't be where they are financially. But then there's always that reassurance that what I'm doing, though not may be financially rewarding, parang hindi mo matimbang eh. When you see families, when you see marriages being revived and families getting to experience God's love and there's reconciliation, when people who have no purpose find their purpose in God, I think there's no greater reward uh, than, than seeing 
people encounter this supernatural love that only God can give. Hey everyone and welcome to Act Like a Man. Hello, hello everyone. Pastor Dennis here. At ngayon, meron po tayong magandang usapan. Usapang lalaki to. I think the first key for content creators is to understand na you have an idea that could change the world. So now, we want to talk about that because a lot of young people today, in fact, a lot of our listeners are 18 to 30 years old. Ang 70% ng listeners ng Act Like a Man. 95% are male. You would see, we are in a demographic that's trying to find their way in life and in their career. I had an idea back then that men can be redeemed, families could be restored, men can be trained to become better fathers, providers, and leaders of the household. I felt like that was an idea that's worth spreading. And if people understand that we can use social media for good, for me, it's going to shape so many minds. It's going to transform so many lives, knowing that I have a message that's worth spreading. So here it is. It's free marketing. Go get your camera and spread those ideas. After the pandemic, that's when we realized, wow, men, you know, with all the talk about mental health, it became so close to home. In this post-pandemic age, madami talagang affected. And the church, in, in many ways, you know, we were trying to prepare and catch up with all these issues about mental health. Because of social media, a generation is exposed to the problems of the whole world. Uh, one of the things that has really helped me is to understand what are the problems that I can solve and what are the problems I cannot. Hindi mo karga lahat ng problema ng mundo. We call it a false burden. A lot of people carry false burden. That's not su supposed to be yours, yet you carry it so it affects you mentally. And the only way really is to come together and struggle together in the community of faith. In scripture, as we look, God commands them, please share the story of my nature and my character because I want a generation being raised knowing who I am. As a pastor, what I've realized is there's so much power in a community, especially of faith, who would struggle with you and wrestle with you in the darkest times of your life. And solutions are not just one easy answer. This is the solution. There are multiple of answers, but you have to start somewhere. The journey always starts in the first step, and a lot of people are afraid to take that first step. Sabi nga nila, the meaning of insanity is trying to do the same thing and expecting a different result. You can't do the same thing and expect a different result. You've got to find creative solutions today. And I just want to encourage you, you know, even as a pastor, I want you to try out walking with God and faith in God.